So the last system we're going to do is the endocrine system. So the endocrine system, the main sources of the endocrine system are going to be the pituitary gland, the adrenal glands, the thyroid, the parathyroid, parathyroid pineal, thymus, okay? And we're going to talk about the different types of hormones that they secrete. So major types of hormones, steroid hormones, are derived from cholesterol. They are estrogens, progesterones, androgens, such as testosterone, cortisol, aldosterone, and then we have peptide hormones, which are proteins or glycoproteins, which would be glucagon, antidiuretic hormone, oxytocin, uh, insulin, somatotropin, prolactin, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone. So a lot of these peptide hormones you see, uh, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, FSH and LH, uh, are going to be involved in uh, the ovulation. And then we see, so peptide hormones would be proteins, steroid hormones would be lipids. So we have different types of hormones that are going to be used. So steroid hormones, most diffuse across the plasma membrane and bind to a receptor. Okay, so because the plasma membrane is a lipid bilayer, the steroid hormones can pass through relatively easily. And hormone acts as a complex, uh, hormone receptor complex acts in the nucleus to inhibit or enhance transcription. So transcription can be stopped or sped up based on what's happening there, what the, the hormone, if it's negative feedback or positive feedback. Protein hormones bind to a receptor at the cell surface because, again, proteins, we know from cells, the Golgi packages the cells to be, uh, the proteins to be shipped out of the cell. The protein hormones wouldn't be able to go in as easily. So what's going to end up happening is they're going to bind to a receptor outside the cell and triggers a change in the activity of the enzymes inside the cell. So it causes a cascade of activity. Uh, the hypothalamus is a region of the forebrain, forebrain contains hormone secreting cells. It interacts with the pituitary gland, which is the master gland. Uh, it is a pea-sized gland at the base of the hypothalamus. Posterior lobe stores and secretes hormones that were synthesized in the hypothalamus, and the anterior lobe produces and secretes its own hormones. So let's talk about the different lobes. The, anti, or the posterior lobe of the pituitary, antidiuretic hormone, water retention in the colon, and oxytocin, uterine contraction at birth. Okay, so those are two examples of hormones from the posterior lobe. The anterior pituitary uh, has a bunch of different hormones there. A lot of these growth hormones and things involved in the uterine cycle all come together. So we talked about feedback mechanisms. I mentioned that before. And a negative feedback increases an increase in concentration of the hormone triggers activity that inhibit further secretion so it shuts it down whereas positive in positive feedback increases and stimulates further secretion so a negative feedback hormone comes in there's a lot of it activities shut down further secretion so make sure there's enough positive feedback it causes a cascade where more and more comes through Thyroid gland disorders controls the rate of metabolism. You have goiter, hyperthyroidism, and hypothyroidism. Local signaling molecules, the prostaglandins, produce and secreted in response to local changes. 16 types with a variety of effects. Growth factors affect different cell division rates and tissues. Here's diabetes, an example of a negative feedback mechanism disease in which excess glucose accumulates in the blood and then the urine. It causes excess urination, constant thirst, weight loss, ketone formation, and acid-base imbalances. So the control of glucose metabolism is pretty interesting right here. You have the pancreas, which is a, another uh, endocrine gland. Uh, what it'll do is the pancreas produces insulin, which results in glucose to glycogen. All right, glucose is uptaken, it's converted into glycogen, glucose levels fall, and then what ends up happening is if the blood glucose is low, the pancreas releases glucagon, which converts that glycogen into glucose, and glucose levels rise. So insulin lowers the amount of glucose, glucagon raises the amount of glucose. So that's an important one to remember. And the two types of diabetes, type 1 is an autoimmune disease, usually appears in childhood, treated with insulin injections, and type 2, target cells don't respond, usually appears in adults, it's treated with diet, 
drugs, or insulin. So specific things about the endocrine system will be based uh, on what you see in the packet. Okay, so I won't ask anything outside of what the packet asks, particularly about which endocrine glands I want you to know and which hormones I want you to know.